I am going to talk about the great carbon offset swindle and uh, our role in this. The first thing to say is why is uh, International Rivers, a river group, so interested in, in carbon offsetting? Uh, and the reason is that when um, international carbon offsetting began to uh, start happening under the Kyoto Protocol about now, uh, almost a decade ago, uh, we start to get a concern that a lot of dam projects which um, would be very destructive, have a lot of negative local impacts, would be uh, subsidized and would happen because they would be able to get offsets. What we've actually found is happening, I've got some, yes, I always forget to turn this on. What we find is happening is actually the opposite. What's happening is that hundreds, many, many hundreds of hydropower projects around the world, which are already being built, are receiving carbon offsets. Um, and so there's no actual, so far, no actual damage, extra damage being done to rivers because of this offset mechanism. The damage that's being done is to the whole climate, uh, I mean, to the climate and to the system that we're developing under the Kyoto Protocol to try to address the climate problem. So basically all these credits being sold from hydro projects are fake credits. They do not represent emission reductions because the dams are being built anyway. And we've looked at this in great detail in the hydropower sector, but you look beyond that at other sectors, you see the same thing is happening very broadly. So these are just some quick statistics on hydro and the point to say is just it's an awful lot of hydropower. Um, the, th these are the projects that are applying for credits, they haven't all been approved, uh, quite a lot of them have and it's a large transfer of money to hydropower developers for basically doing what they're doing anyway. If all these projects were approved, um, the 1.5, basically one and a half billion dollars transferred every year from taxpayers, consumers in developed countries that have ratified the Kyoto Protocol uh, to dam developers in developing countries, mainly in China. Now when we talk about carbon offsets, most people think of, well I think in this country anyway, most people think of what's called a voluntary market. So companies like TerraPass or, or Native Energy, um, where if you're going to take a flight or <clears throat> buy a car, you say, okay, I would like to offset my emissions for a year or my emissions from this flight, and so I will buy a amount of offsets equivalent to how much I emit. Um, this talk is actually not about that voluntary market, but my talk is about what's called the regulated or the compliance market, which is what happens under the Kyoto Protocol. And that's actually about 90, at the moment around 95% of all offsets worldwide happen under this uh, compliance or regu regulated market, um, which is under a system called the Clean Development Mechanism or the CDM. That is the Kyoto Protocol's main carbon trading mechanism. And this is, slide just gives you some idea of the scale of what we're talking about. It's a pretty, it's a large amount of money at stake here. Um, possible of $36 billion in credits being sold by 2012, which is the year when the current phase of the Kyoto Protocol comes to an end. Um, there's a thousand projects that have already been approved. Uh, all of these are projects in developing countries. Another 2,000 applying for approval and every week more and more projects apply. And uh, if you can see here the different types of projects that this uh, pie chart divides the projects by the number of offsets being sold. So this is equivalent to the amount of money going to the different types of projects. And now you might hope that under a clean development mechanism, most of the money would go to um, subsidize clean, what we would normally think of as clean development projects, so um, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and so on. What's actually happening is uh, so far, only 16% of the credits go to renewable energy, um, of which only 0.5% is going to solar power. Most of that 16% is, is wind and biomass. 17% um, is, is going to hydropower. And the single largest, single largest uh, amount of investment is going to industrial gas projects, which I'll talk about later. These are project, industrial projects which emit gases which have a very high global warming potential. So if you destroy them, it has a very, uh, a very positive impact on, on the climate, but it doesn't do anything in terms of getting us off the whole fossil fuel system. And as I'll say later, this is actually a very inefficient way of, of dealing with these gases. Now another uh, important point to make to try and understand what's happening uh, with carbon trading is there are two basic concepts in carbon trading which are very different in how they work, uh, although they get confused in a lot of people's minds and they also, in some ways, the systems do inter intermesh. 
But what we hear a lot of, uh, about a lot in terms of being, it's on its way to being established in California. It's very likely to come in at the federal level. Uh, it's already happening in Europe. It's a cap and trade system, which is based basically on allowances to pollute, but their allowances, um, generally each allowance represents one ton of carbon dioxide. And um, if you want to emit more than the allowances you have, you have to buy more allowances from someone else or, or cut your emissions. And the system is based on a, a real physical entity, which is carbon that is actually being emitted. But the CDM, the Clean Development Mechanism, and offsets are a different type of system. They're, they're a baseline and credit system. And they're basically, um, they're not based upon each certificate representing a actual ton emitted. They're based on a certificate representing a ton not emitted. The problem with that is that is a fictional commodity. Nobody can actually know what something not emitted is. And so from that come a lot of cascading problems of trying to actually create these certificates, which are, in effect, property rights. They have a legal, uh, a legal character. But you're trying to create a legal property right from something which is fictional. And that gets very difficult.